Hello everyone, and welcome to the Postmodern Art Podcast, the podcast dedicated to giving artists who are wowing the world over the platform they deserve. I am your host, Nathan Ragland, and before we get into the podcast, I've been teasing the new designs for the merch shop for the past few weeks. Well, I feel like now should be a good time to show them off. So, video viewers, check it out. First, we have bright lights. Look at this vibrant design with a little flashy me on top. Stunning. Now, check out Mr. Moneybags. This fun little Muppet Man is here to fund all your dream projects. These two designs were done by the amazing Tipsy J Hearts. I cannot thank her enough for all the hard work she put into these amazing designs. You can have these designs plastered on a plethora of different items next week, April 1st, when you go to teespring.com slash store slash PMAP. Get yours when they drop. Now, let's grapple with today's guest, shall we? Today we have Edith Surreal, an independent wrestler who's found a seamless way to fuse her love of wrestling with a love for art as well. She was a treat to have on the podcast, and I hope her insight in wrestling expands your mind on the art form itself, considering the fact that it should be definitely considered an art form as it is. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did, and I hope you support her in all the links down below. But now, without further ado, please enjoy the Postmodern Art Podcast. You're muted on your side. I don't know if that's intentional or not. <laughs> there we no, go. I just don't know how to use this. <laughs> you know what? Fair can you hear me? Enough. I can hear you wonderfully. Yay. How do I sound as well? Do I sound good? Am I soft? Or just let me know. You sound great. You sound like you have a real microphone, and I, I probably sound like I'm talking to my computer. <laughs> I will say my internal mic. Hey, that, there is no shame in that whatsoever. As long as I can hear you perfectly, I was gonna say it's funny that you say that you sound like you got a real microphone. I literally just got this one like earlier this week because I'm trying to get more serious oh. into like voice acting and more like better podcast stuff. So I wanted to get like a better mic for it. So, oh, congrats! Thank you. Big man. step. Yes, yeah, big step indeed. <laughs> uh how are you doing today i am good i'm excited for the weekend That's a long great. day of work oh i'm uh i'm good how are you i'm doing wonderful now i'm actually getting the chance to sit down and chat with you <laughs> oh. <laughs> well because i i've seen like you know I, i'm very big when it comes to like the internet wrestling community as a whole and such and so like i'm always like seeing you like whether it be like Effie uh, promoting you or like matches that you've had with uh, Dark Sheik and stuff. So it's like, I've always been intrigued to just see yourself. And now that I actually have a art podcast, I figured you'd be the perfect wrestler to talk to. Best way of blending oh, both yeah. of my favorite worlds. <laughs> yes. No, I love that. I mean, same. You know, I, I usually do like wrestling podcasts. I'm excited to like do something a little different and um, kind of talk more about the art of wrestling. Yes. I'm really excited about this. Yes, that's one thing I was definitely excited about. And I will go ahead and give you a fair amount of warning. I will divulge a good bit into wrestling a little bit, but trust me, I'm dedicating a good chunk of it to the art aspect because that's another significant passion that you have. So why would I divulge away from that? So, Yay, absolutely. So this is the first time you've been on an art podcast, I should ask? Yes, yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> I was going to say, because I know I've actually seen at least a couple of appearances you've had when it comes to the wrestling podcast as well. So I wanted to make sure I had to ask the right question on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anyways. All right, Edith, before we get started with the podcast, I must ask the icebreaker question. I ask for every single podcast. What is your most unpopular art opinion? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what? A, um, I don't know. If I mean, maybe in the global sense of it, maybe that professional wrestling is the ultimate art form. In, in wrestling, that's not an uncommon opinion, but I don't know if anyone outside of our little bubble would agree to that. I mean, I, I know me personally, I do. That's why I was more than happy to have you on the podcast. But for those that yeah. may not have that same opinion, why do you have that opinion, if I may ask? Well, I mean, so professional wrestling is a blend of everything. It's live action entertainment it's interactive it's um you know it's in front of your face it's a perfect blend of improv with scripted um like scripted acting it blends um long-term storytelling with short-term storytelling with open loop narratives with closed loop narratives all in the same show there are sometimes you get a whole story 
in one match. And then there's sometimes where stories will develop over the course of years. Um, and some of the things that are incorporated in the stories are real life events. Sometimes they're all scripted. Sometimes it just happens that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, there's nothing else like it. And you have to, you know, something for everyone. If you're just coming to a wrestling show for the first time, there's a story for you there. If you've been following wrestling your entire life, if you followed The Undertaker's career for, what, 30 plus years? Yeah. <laughs> there's an entire story narrative that is unlike nothing else. A movie is just an hour, two, three, four hours. You know, you have the Star Wars, what's, that's not a trilogy. What's, what's, there's uh, nine of them, right? So we just call um, it a saga. <laughs> saga, I mean, that's, that's nine movies, but that's, I mean, that's long, but like wrestling is, years it's lifetime so um it's unlike anything else so that's that's why i say it's it's the ultimate art form and that's a hill if i may ask if that's a hill that you're willing to die on absolutely there it's all go. i do <laughs> <laughs> there we go then with that i cannot think of a better way to start the postmodern art podcast welcome everyone i am your host nathan raglan uh feel free to subscribe or follow on whatever platform you prefer uh we have merch link is in the description below and follow us on twitter at postmod art pod for future updates and guest announcements including today's guest <clears throat> hailing from philadelphia pennsylvania she is a former young lions cup champion and number 365 on the 2020 pro wrestling illustrated 500 the artist formerly known as still life with apricots and pears welcome to the podcast ida surreal how you doing today Eve? Oh my gosh! What a, I love that intro. Oh, you have a future in this. I love it. Uh, thank you so much, Terry, for having me. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down, chat for a moment. And hey, if you need to use that intro for any like future, you know, promo packages, feel free. Go for it. I am all for it. Uh, oh yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll yeah. talk. We'll talk. Um, uh, but thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and chat. And I really do appreciate you giving insight not only with your art, but how you found quite possibly the perfect way to blend that with wrestling. But before we really divulge into that, let's go back a little bit. I want to know the origin story of Edith Surreal. What got you interested in art and in wrestling in the first place? Oh, wow. Um, so I think I've been in a wrestling fan my whole life. You okay. know, I just have always loved it. I've watched it forever. Mm -hmm. Um, I was never much of an athlete growing up, so um, never really pursued it as a wrestler, uh, you know, when I was younger. But I got interested into art when I was involved in, like, the punk scene, like, oh, okay. punk music in high school. Um, was never much of a musician either, so I got really into, like, designing stuff for my friend's band. So I would do silkscreen posters and CD covers and websites and all that stuff. So that's what... That's what really introduced me into the art world. And I love um, silkscreen art. I just love gig posters. That was like my first love as far as like visual art. I love the blend that it's like inspired by the music. A gig poster is an advertisement, so it has a purpose. It's not just an expression of, you know, um, an artist's vision, right? It's like an artist's vision, yes, but it's also trying to promote something and trying to, to get encourage people to go to a thing and capture this this shared moment, which is like the show or the band or, or whatever that is. Um, and I just love it always had this really raw grittiness to it. Like I love the feeling of silkscreen posters. You can feel the ink on there. You can see all the little imperfections. So oh, I yeah. just I just love it. Um, so I really pursued that. I got a degree in graphic design and did lots of silk screening while I was in college. Uh, I tried to find a way to to silkscreen something for whatever project it was. Um, and yeah, that's why I did that. I was working as like a freelance illustrator and freelance designer. Um, I had a couple solo shows with like, uh, for gig posters essentially. Um, but they were more like, um, not for concerts. They were just like, uh, you know, just designs that I did. Um, so I was doing that for a while and it, it didn't really, I never really hit my goals that I, I wanted to accomplish as an illustrator, as a designer, as a freelance artist kind of thing. Um, and then by chance, I happened to meet um, Mike Quackenbush from the Wrestle Factory and Chikara. And he invited me to a free workshop. And, you know, he spoke at this event and invited us all. 
um, to come to this free wrestling workshop. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. And, you know, um, after the workshop, it was like, okay, this is fun. And then he invited us to do like a, a one-on-one class, which is just like a short little like seven week course, mm-hmm. you know, introduction to professional wrestling. And I did that and I started to fall in love with it. And there were like 16 people that started and only let's say like four or five passed. passed. Um, so I was like, oh, I guess I have like a little bit of a neck for this. And then I took the 201 and then I just, re- you know, uh, rearranged my whole life to become a wrestler. There we go. Um, I just fell in love with everything about it. And, um, you know, now that, that was five years ago and, you know, I'm three years into being like a rostered wrestler, wrestling on shows. And it's, you know, at this time I like, I've, I, I'm, my whole life is wrestling. You know, I, my part-time job is just to support being a wrestler. Um, so everything is just about making this dream happen and just, just to wrestle. That's all I want to do right now. Well, there we go. There we go. And I tell you right now, from, from an outsider standpoint, you've dirt, you've dirt, like, what is that word? Uh, <laughs> no, you certainly, <laughs> I was going to say, you certainly, uh, definitely shown case that love and passion for that and, really made your presence very well known with uh, all different aspects of your wrestling. Um, if I may just go back just a little bit, I was going to say uh, one of the questions you did answer was for you when it go from being a love to a passion in your career, and that was that the course you were talking about as well as, I guess, when it comes to art, the, the posters. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but also, mm-hmm. okay, but for also as well, uh, for those that have seen kind of your, star, your, your style and your art and such, uh, what would you say is like an inspiration for that kind of stuff? Would it be like that punk grunge scene that you were just like a major fan of growing up or? Are you talking about for my wrestling or for my like visual art? Both. <laughs> ah, um, I love, I love a certain sense of like minimalism. Okay. If I was to think about all my different tastes in music and art and like movies, um, I love silk screening because and that style of illustration because you only have a few colors you can work with. Mm-hmm. You know, each color is one screen, is one stencil. So you're limited. So I love that you have to make every single bit of that color count. Um, and it's a very limited medium as far as how much detail you can get. For most time, you can get pretty good detail, but um, sometimes you're printing on a homemade screen or something like that and you just can't get that detail. So like, you have to be very careful about how you're going to handle your line weight and stuff like that. So I love that kind of minimalism, and I think it makes the designs much more striking that way. So that's, like, one aspect. And I think in minimalism, like, there's this band I really love. They're called the XX. Um, they were kind of popu- more popular about, like, 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. But they're just so – their first album is so minimalist. It's just, like, very, very quiet guitars, very quiet bass, and then, like, a sampler – kind of um i guess i don't know it's like a dj i don't know i don't know what i think about like rock music but like a guy um but it's just like very like minimal and it just everything feels so much more impactful mm-hmm. um so i love that kind of minimalist approach and then um i love this is maybe more for wrestling but i love uh nicholas winding referent who is the director of drive and bahala rising uh, and there you go um, in, only God forgives. Um, I just love the way he paces his movies. Um, it's almost like he's trying to bore you to a point, and then there's this like out of nowhere act of violence. Like in in a lot of these movies, I just I just mentioned, like it's really slow, it's beautiful, it's incredible cinematography, and then there's just a gruesome scene out of nowhere, um, and that just makes it so much more impactful because you're like you're lulled into this false sense of security of just like, oh, this is just a beautiful world that he's created. Look at all these beautiful colors. Oh, Ryan Gosling's so handsome. All of these things. And then all of a sudden, like, someone's getting their head smashed in an elevator. Um, so I love that kind of way he's playing with that that pacing and stuff like that. So those are just some, like, general things that I think about when I'm making art or when I'm making wrestling is what is the least amount, like, when I'm a wrestler, what's the least amount of movements I can do to tell this story? And that's going to make it more impactful. And then how can I contrast these two? How can I have a match that goes very slow, 
So when there's that big impact or that big smash or that big whatever, it feels so much, um, it's so much more powerful because it's against such a quiet moment. There we go. I mean, I, I assume that's kind of the, the blueprint that you kind of have with most of your matches going into them at the very least. I try to. Um, wrestling's a little different because it's a collaboration. Right. Um, so for those of, of, you know, people in your audience who don't really know, like wrestling is this combination of improv and script, scripted. You know, when people say it's fake, um, that they're saying it's predetermined. So we know who's going to win the match. Most of the time, sometimes we don't. Sometimes it just happens. Um, but most of the time, you know what the end of the match is going to be. But what happens in the ring, what the actual fighting is, that's this blend of improv stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's this blend of things that are um, scripted or discussed um, or practiced. Um, so you know some things are going to happen, and sometimes you're just wrestling. You know, we all know this basic language of professional wrestling where we can just go in there and put on a match without talking to each other. So that's how a wrestler from the United States can wrestle a wrestler from Japan. They don't speak the same language, but they speak the language of professional wrestling. So you just know what these movements are. You can sense what this other person's playing or thinking. It's a lot like music where, you know, you have like jazz or something like that. I don't know a lot about music, but you have kind of like music that's very improvisational. Mm -hmm. Um, they just kind of know they're in the same key and they can kind of sense what the other person's doing. Uh, wrestling's in that same thing. You agree on a key or you agree on a style you want to do and you can just kind of put on this performance that looks like a fight. Um, I don't even know where I started at this. Uh, what was your question initially? <laughs> no, my, my question was you were talking about how uh, kind of like the, the movies that you described, whenever you're going to a wrestling match, you're trying to think about how can I tell this story in like the least steps possible or, and I was asking yes. if that was basically kind of a blueprint you, you kind of have going into a match. So yes. Okay. So short answer. Yes. That's try to, that's kind of what I try to bring to the table. But like I said, it's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. So this other person may have a totally different idea of what wrestling is to them. And then we kind of have to marry these two. Sometimes you're on the same page and you have the same idea of puck. And this performance is, effortless and sometimes you you disagree on what the performance is going to look like and what the match is going to be and that's fine you know you work it out and sometimes that's the most interesting match because it's this blend of two very different things and you know generally speaking when i go into a match i i do the same things every time mm -hmm. but what makes match really interesting is when i do when i wrestle someone who does something different every time or will re react to me in a different way or will allow me to react to them different than I would any other opponent. All right, then. No, I mean, it, it makes sense whenever you're, it, whenever you describe it like that. Cause I, you know, you said yourself, like you can go in having a certain way, but like, again, this is a collaborative effort. It's not just, you know, one voice dictating it all, you know, it, 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 if you want to create the best product pro possible and that's visually the best, you want to make sure that both sides are, I guess, working coherently. Am, am I, yeah. Yeah, there you go. And playing to each other's strengths and doing your style. You know, there's many different styles of wrestling. Um, I do a couple different styles, but if someone asks me to do something that's totally outside of what I already do, it may not be the best because it's not, I don't paint with those colors. You know, I don't play that there instrument. Um, so we have to find a way to blend, you know, my saxophone with their xylophone. I don't know. That's, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good music metaphor but like you, you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> no, I, I totally get where you're getting at. i'm just thinking that would be just like an interesting sound nevertheless like to see how well those two would blend just out of curiosity like improv style <laughs> uh goodness well we're, we're talking about uh you know wrestling stuff you, you mentioned earlier um like you said you it was a training course that got you really interested kind of breaking in how tough was it for you like adjusting to this wrestling lifestyle and like trying to break in because it's not like you trained and then you were immediately in the ring it took you a couple years to actually get in the ring if i'm right on that yes yeah i mean there's a lot that goes into that so there's like adjusting to the life of a professional athlete so all of a sudden i have to rearrange my whole diet all of a sudden i have to find this regular gym regimen to take care of my body um, 
So like that's a big lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. Um, Being a professional wrestler is a very demanding schedule, especially when you're young and you're, we call it paying your dues. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's when you're helping on a ring crew. You're going to the shows and setting up the ring and you're helping the, the fans find their seats and you're selling merchandise and you're going on long car drives, you know, driving with the other wrestlers to the shows. And that's a busy schedule and that takes a lot of time. And it's hard to explain to your like friends and loved ones that you can't hang out this weekend because you have to go drive to Chicago and put up a ring. Um, but that's kind of what, what you do. And um, I fell in love with all of it, just specific, specifically like the camaraderie with my peers, with the other trainees. Um, I love those long car rides, even though they're grueling, but it's just like I get this really, you know, good quality time with my friends, with like the, you know, my closest friends. Or people that I've just met before we even got in the car and we become best friends by the end of the trip. Um, But yeah, I think just the time commitment was the biggest adjustment for me to getting used to that and realizing that like all the things I I also liked, you know, working a full-time job, Mm -hmm. having doing freelance illustration and like sitting around watching TV on the weekends and just being like having lazy days. Like I can't, do that like I did before. It's so much more, it's just so time consuming to do this. And I love every second. Well, not every second of it. Sometimes <laughs> I don't like it. Some of the seconds, but like, it's so worth it. Especially like right now with where I'm at in my life. Like it, it's so worth it. And maybe someday it won't, but now it is. I, I, I was just going to say, I mean, you say, you know, there's, you know, like all of it. I mean, with any job that you're going to have, there's going to be some aspects that you just can't stand. I, I work a forklift job at night and there's some people or there's some aspects of it that I'm just like, why do I have to deal with this on a daily basis? Oh my God. <laughs> but I still love the job nevertheless. <laughs> but I imagine with wrestling, it's a lot more, uh, I mean, it's obviously a lot more intense. There's a lot more dedication that goes into it. And there's a lot more interaction, especially with some of the people that you've trained with at least according to your website, with the likes of Drew Gulak, Orange Cassidy, Chuck Taylor, world famous CB. How surreal must it have been? Must it, is it for you, especially now? Like especially as I'm listening off those names, how surreal is it for you to know that as you're going on this journey, you've met incredible people just like the ones listed? Yeah, I mean, it's cool, especially because I mean, when they trained me, they weren't where they are are now. Mm-hmm. You know, they were a few years ahead of me on their way there, and you knew they were going to get there. Um. So it's just really great to see that their hard work paid off. Mm -hmm. So I know that maybe if I keep working hard and things fall my way, I can get into that position. Um, You know, it doesn't feel so unobtainable where a lot of times as, at least this is how I felt as an artist, um, my dreams felt unobtainable sometimes. Or maybe, I don't know, just it, it didn't feel, I didn't see that path um for whatever reason um but with wrestling i do and i feel like um yeah just just seeing where they're at i feel like it's it's obtainable to me and um i don't really get starstruck anymore like it's just a lot of these wrestlers are just my peers and i've met them along the road before they got signed um or they you know the ones who have been signed do seminars or I just meet them backstage somewhere. So I don't really get that starstruck anymore. I did at first for sure, but (laughs) you quickly get, because it's all just, we're all just people. (laughs) That's fair enough. I was going to say, it's a good thing that you mentioned kind of, you know, how you like with, uh, with art and, uh, wrestling and such. Words are wonderful, Nathan. <laughs> no, uh, what I was going to say is, you know, not only, as I've said in the intro before, like, you know, you're, you're seeing kind of this path with wrestling now that you didn't quite see with art, but yet somehow you found a way to get art blended in with your wrestling as well. Um, when did you decide, at least for you and your character and such, to really truly incorporate art the way you have into your wrestling, into your presentation as a whole? So a lot of that stuff was kind of assigned to me. So the place I worked uh, initially uh, was called Chikara. And for those who don't know, Chikara is um, a very comic book world um, in wrestling. So it's a wrestling organization, um, or was. Mm -hmm. um, And all the stories and characters are very inspired by comic books. So it's this very colorful costumes, very elaborate characters, and, you know, deep backstories. Um, 
And, you know, contrast with that with maybe some wrestling that we see on TV, which is just like, just people. Like they're just exaggerated versions of themselves. But in Chikara, there were crabs and ants and, you know, um, there were people too. And then I was a wrestler who was called Still Life with Apricots and Pears. And I was a painting. I was a work of art come to life. So the person I worked with was called Blank and they were the tortured artist. And they created me, um, Still Life with Apricots and Pears. So that initial character of Still Life was something that was kind of given to me. Like I was told the concept, I was given the name and given the gear. Um, but I think it was given to me because I did have the art background and I could add a lot of authenticity for that. You know, um, if someone's playing a hermit crab, well, they're not really a hermit crab. So how do you, there's like, I'm not going to bash hermit crab. Hermit crab's great. But like, you know, I was able to bring that real life art, artness to the character. Um, and that's what I did. I just ran with it. You know, I was able to just kind of like start playing and seeing what worked, what the audience responded to, what made sense for what I could do, um, what made sense for like what my body could do and, and what felt naturally to my personality. Mm -hmm. And I just ran with it and it just snowballed from there. there um, so that's kind of how I, I came up with the character. And then um, I kind of hit a, a point where still life, the name didn't really make sense anymore. Um, I wanted to be seen more, um, be seen more as a human because I incorporated a lot of my real life, you know, over time I incorporated a lot of my real life events and real life story into the character and it didn't make sense to just be limited by having this name still life. So I, you know, started working under the name Edith Surreal, which is what I wrestle now and which is, you know, a more human sounding name, um, but I still incorporate a lot of art aspects. I'm inspired by a lot of like um, people within the art world to kind of flesh out the character and also bringing in part of my own ex experience as an artist. And it also gives me an opportunity to make art for the character. Um, so I, you know, design all my own merch for the most part. I'm, you know, I'm working with some more designers moving forward, but um, I make all my own merch as of now. And, um, screen print a lot of it. So I've been really into like making posters for the character, for myself, for Edith, and for like different events that I'm doing. Um, so it's kind of reignited my passion for visual art, for screen printing, for illustration. And it just gives me something different to sell. It gives fans something different to buy and respond to and, you know, something to hang on their walls. Cause you know, art in wrestling isn't always the best. So I'm happy to like, um, be able to kind of fill a niche there oh there we go i'll tell you right now whenever you do decide to relaunch the store with that's more edith based you better believe there's gonna be at least a poster on this wall and i'm gonna try to get sure as well yeah. because it's one of those i whenever i was uh getting ready for this one i was looking on your the, the still life uh store that's still there most of the stuff was already sold out but like there were still some like really good like amazing designs that you have up there and another way that you've really sort of expressed yourself with your art at least from my eyes is the ring gear that you wear that you wear at times how long does it take for you to really settle and then go out and make some of the amazing just if i'm just gonna be straight up some of the gorgeous ring gear that you have so i don't make it myself i have um i work with closet champion they're ring makers based here in philadelphia okay. ring gear makers um so at first like i said it was kind of the, the initial gear was given to me but it was all white. And the idea was like, I was this blank canvas and then blank, the, the artist would paint on me. Mm -hmm. So every, he like not to spoil anything, he doesn't know how to paint. So I had to like, we had to fake it in these videos of him doing it, or he would throw some paint and then later I'd have to finish it off. Um, that's a little insider thing for anybody, but, um, <laughs> so that was kind of was the first set of gear. And then I just started kind of like incorporating my own ideas to it. Um, and then collaborating with Kate, who is the, the, the gear maker at Classic Champion. So, you know, it's a lot of like Pinterest stuff. And I would just kind of like look like now I just kind of look and see what's what's happening in the world of fashion and what's happening in the world of like, you know, what what people are wearing at the Met Gala and what like, you know, Ariana Grande and Lady Gaga and uh, Miley Cyrus are wearing uh, and try to like bring that inspiration in a little bit. And then it's also very inspired, like I'm still inspired by art. So the latest couple sets are 
um, bring in a lot of gold ornate detailing, which is to represent a gold frame. And then the rest of the gear is kind of like a paint pattern or a tie dye or something like that to represent a canvas. So I'm still very inspired by art, um, but I'm trying to incorporate more of things that I'm really interested in or what's current in the world of fashion and, and art and pop music. I, I will say one thing. I think you probably picked the best time when it comes to like, at least being a mask wrestler with everyone going for the masks nowadays. I think you picked yeah. probably the best time to, to be a mask wrestler when it comes to designing some of that fashion. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot to look at there. <laughs> I was going to say, if you need some more inspiration, I got some at the shop right now. No. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, I, I, I wanted to ask this a little bit, and you kind of already answered it, but I still want to get more definitive answer with it. Uh, I know you said the character was basically given to you, but I just have to ask, when you were still life with apricots and pears, what was the affixation with sort of centered around fruit, if I may ask? Um, that was that was just part of it. That was, <laughs> it was, of that it? was just the name given and um it just felt like it's a very visual thing um so it was it was easy to play with and it was just really fun to come up with moves that were related to fruit mm -hmm. um usually when you're fleshing out at least in jakara when we're fleshing out our move set um we look at things that are related to the character so hermit crab to bring up another example does a boston crab and a half crab and a flat crab these are different wrestling moves mm -hmm. um so for me, I was just looking at like fruit moves. So like the there's a grapevine, which is kind of a leg submission. There's a stretch plum, which is kind of like a standing head and neck submission. Um, and then I just started doing my own moves and just making like making up the name mm -hmm. and giving it like I have a fruit by the foot, which is my drop kick, and I have a fruit roll up, which is a it's technically an Oklahoma roll. But, you know, I'm calling it a fruit roll-up. There you go. <laughs> you also got the melon baller as well. I did want to say real yeah. quick, I did want to say real quickly, though, the one that you have named Fruit by the Foot, as great as it is for the drop kick, I thought that would have fit a lot better if you'd done the whatever Enzo Mori called the eat the feet, the whenever you have your foot against the person's head, the drop down, that one. Oh, yes. So that's that's actually Chuck Taylor's move. That, that is, is the... Okay. Yes. I, if I'm thinking of it correctly, so... Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give credit to Chuck Taylor for that one, there you go. which I can't move as he was one of my trainers. There you he go. would be mad. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I was just saying, whenever I see fruit by the foot and I was thinking of like the incorporation thing, that was just the first thing that came to my mind. But again, you are an independent wrestler. You, you are your own person. You can name whatever you want. You can name a, <laughs> you can name a flop to the ground. The, uh, you know, the, the fruit basket, if you want to, I don't care. <laughs> I'll need a fruit basket. There you go. <laughs> Ah, uh, goodness. Um, but, you know, as you've, as you're developing this character a, a lot more, you know, especially now that you've catered it a lot more to not just the fruit aspect, but being your own, like, artist with Edith Surreal, how, in your opinion, do you try to find a way to find that perfect blend, in your opinion, uh, between art and wrestling? Um, hmm. I don't know. I guess it's like being inspired by art is what always separates me, so... In wrestling, it's really important to stand out. Um, you know, of course, you have to blend in with what wrestling looks like today, but you have to stand out against all the other wrestlers. Um, so I think I constantly look to the world of art to help inspire me. Um, so instead of, you know, I see where a lot of wrestlers maybe are looking towards current movies or current trends in, you know, pop culture to define their characters. I'm going to look at, I'm really interested in Edie Sedgwick right now. That was kind of the inspiration for the name. Okay. Um, I, look, I look at her and the world of the factory and Andy Warhol and that kind of thing. And those kind of really eccentric um, people in that world. And I start to pull things in from there to help like flesh out my character a little bit. Um, and also like, like as an artist, there are things that I just know about that world and that I was a part of or that I just do and that, that is just naturally and authentically part of myself. Um, so I just try to pull all those things into the experience of Edith Surreal and that helps me really just stand out against someone who is maybe looking at a Jason Statham or looking at, um, you know, Lady Gaga or looking right, you know, at Miley Cyrus or something like that. Um, 
I kind of am able to have a different spin on that, a different perspective on this character. I, and I know I've already shouted a little bit of praise, but I, like I said before, I think you found one of the best ways out there to really like try to find a blend of not just, you know, a good wrestling, but like finding a way to incorporate art in, and outside passion as a whole, like find a way to incorporate that into your wrestling style and into your presentation more than anything else. I can only imagine for you, uh, I mean, you've already divulged it to a little bit, but I can only imagine how much time and effort you probably sit down just debating on how you want to present yourself more than anything else. It's actually, it comes a lot more naturally than you'd think. Oh, really? Um, yes. Like, that was kind of, I didn't really know what still life was supposed to be when I started. Okay. I just kind of, you know, I was kind of told some characteristics of this character, but the movements just kind of happened naturally. The way I would walk and the way I would express myself and the way I move is just natural. I'm just kind of dialing things up and just trying to move in a more unique way. So like, if you look at still life or Edith now, like the movements are very unique. So the way, the way I open the curtain, the way I walk to the ring, the way I get in the ring, the way I like try to put on a hold. Um, I try to make all that stuff unique. I try to make every movement, every, anything my body does in the ring or getting to the ring feel different. Um, you know, one of the things we talk about in wrestling is the silhouette test. You want to make sure that if your character is in a silhouette, you can stand out. People know who you are. Like, we know what John Cena, if we hold John Cena up to a silhouette, we know what it looks like. You know, he's very muscly. He has the baggy pants. He's moving in a specific way versus The Undertaker is very tall and very stoic and, um, you know, moving much different versus, you know, a Nikki Bella versus, um, you know... Um, like Shotzi Blackheart. Like we know what all these people are going to look like in a silhouette, right? We can, we know who who they all are. Um, so I try to like think about that. Is if you couldn't see what I look like and you just see the shadow, you would know. I want you to know it's me. Um, and I want like if we all do the same move, if we all lock up the same way, I want to make sure that my lockup is different. And that's kind of like that goes back to art where. There are so many graphic designers out there. There's so many illustrators. So many people doing a similar thing. What makes you different? Why would anyone care about you? What do you do better than anyone else? What perspective do you have that no one else has? Um, it was hard to find. I had a really hard time finding that as an artist. Mm -hmm. I just found myself constantly just mimicking other things that I saw. Um, I don't know, and I knew I wanted to have my own style, and maybe I did. Maybe I'm just being like too critical of myself. But my feeling was that nothing I did stood out. And within wrestling, I'm able to do that. Like, I feel like I do stand out. Um, so maybe it was just such a struggle as an artist. And I thought, so I spent all that time obsessing over how to stand out that I never did. And now I'm just kind of letting it all go, letting it all go and being natural and being authentic to who I am. And that's what helps me stand out. And that's what people can connect to. There we go. There we go. That's that. That's a beautiful way to word it. I don't know how I could. I mean, I, I'm not in your shoes. I can't think of a better way to word it myself. But still, <laughs> um, um, so I mean, you know, again, you talk about like you know all these experiences, like trying to stand out and such. And you certainly stand out in just about any sort of independent promotion that you've stepped into. Hood Slam, Black Label Pro, Game Changer Wrestling with Camp Leapfrog, and Effie's Big Gay Brunch or Block, whichever one you want to emphasize on. Out of all those experiences that I just listed off, what would you say has been like the best experience so far? Oh my gosh. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, it, it just keeps growing and I keep getting bigger and bigger opportunities. So it all feels like, um, I'd say like a lot of the kind of queer, like I'm a queer wrestler. So a lot of the queer centric shows that I've been doing, um, Butch for score, at prime, it was originally primetime pro wrestling and then now it's kind of moved on to its own thing. Um, so we did the Cassandra Cup recently, which was a tournament, and that's going to air on March 28th on independent wrestling television. Um, so I think those kinds of things are, this is kind of, you know, um, a little aside from talking about art and wrestling, but, you know, to help build this, this queer culture, mm. this LGBTQ plus culture within wrestling is just like really you know, close to my heart. So being able to be a part of that and to be a part of that, that experience with my peers in the locker room 
you know, and that extends to Effie's Big Gay Brunch. Mm -hmm. And that extends to Kelly Frog, which is, um, you know, we feature a lot of queer talent on those, on that roster. Um, Any of those experiences to help kind of be a part of that community is is the most special to me. Um, So I'd have to say that if that's kind of a, a... a broad answer it's not very specific no, I, but <laughs> i was gonna say, say that. It, it totally makes sense i was actually gonna divulge a little bit more to that before we do continue i totally forgot to grab this give me one quick moment I just want mm-hmm. to... awkward pause but here we go i just wanted to say you know again i i've been paying attention to independent wrestling and you know uh effie i don't know if you're watching this but i do want to say <laughs> Nailed it. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, I got the Effie. Um I haven't even done the acceptance speech for it. Um thank you, Effie, for letting me bribe you for this wonderful bust that you have and um for the representation that you give not only to Edith but to several in the independent wrestling community. And um you are more than welcome to hop on the podcast if you want. Just shoot me a message, DM me. I, there's many easy ways to come contact me. <laughs> I, I had to get my soapbox. I hadn't done the, I hadn't done the accepted speech. I, I bribed him for Lord knows how much. It was a wonderful speech. <laughs> but I, I that actually leads me to my next point. Um, like you said, like for you, you're a queer wrestler, and you know, with all these big opportunities and such, how important is it for you not just to have these opportunities in the wrestling community, but also as the art community? Like, how important is it for you to have that representation and for you to be one of the people to strongly represent it? Um, I mean, it's really humbling. It was, you know, it's, it's cliche to say, but there's like, I didn't have someone like me to look up to when I was young. Um, you know, I didn't, there weren't openly trans wrestlers on TV, um, or many openly queer wrestlers. So I didn't really have that. And like the representations of, of transgender people in media was really hurtful. You know, it goes anything from like Ace Ventura to episodes of Cops to, you know, stuff on wrestling, you know, stuff. There was an infamous Mark Henry in China segment that was, like, you know, very transphobic. So I experienced a lot of that growing up, and I'm very thankful that that doesn't exist anymore, at least as pervasive as it was before, and I can be part of a positive representation of a queer person, of a transgender woman. Um, It's really important to me, and... You know, a lot, when I initially got started, a lot of my goals were very like, oh, I want to wrestle at this place and I want to win this championship and I want to like go here and do all this. And now it's much more focused on making sure I am a positive representation and growing this community and, you know, helping to change, you know, the dialogue around queer talent within wrestling. And, and I really want there to be more. You know, my goal is to have more queer people on writing staff and more queer people in leadership within wrestling to make sure that the voices are authentic and that there are, there can be queer um, stories told in wrestling. You know, there hasn't been, you know, a a homosexual relationship on TV or any kind of queer relationship um, as a love story. And there's like love stories in wrestling all the time. Um, There hasn't really been a genuine authentic one um, within wrestling that I can think of. So I want to see stuff like that happen more. Um, so those are kind of where my goals are as far as wrestling is concerned. Absolutely. And as well, I know that wrestling is kind of where you're more emphasized on at this point, but like I said, um, how important is it for you to also have this kind of representation as an artist as well? Um, I guess it's hard to say cause I feel very like disconnected from the art community. Okay. Um, so my, I mean, my whole community is, is very much, uh, wrestling based and i wasn't really out as an artist so that one's that's a little tougher question to to answer but um yeah okay no i i understand i understand that and for someone that's entrenched in the wrestling world like you uh, for someone that is entrenched in the rest words nathan words (laughs) (laughs) for someone that is entrenched in the wrestling world like you are i imagine it's a lot more significant or not significant but it's a lot more important for you to have that representation when it comes to LGBTQ plus uh, more represented through there. Cause that's the one that I know that, you, that you said yourself, you have, you want to see that positive uh, representation of it showcase a lot more than what it has always been historically. So mm-hmm. what was that? <laughs> oh, sorry. That was my alarm. <laughs> okay. 
Oof. I was about to say, is that like a fire alarm? Are we about to get ready? No. no. Uh, so. it's a very charming fire alarm. There you go. Um, oh, uh, words. Um, <laughs> when it comes to that representation so far, like you've already done a lot to showcase that within the community as a whole. Like I mentioned before with Effie's Big Gay Brunch or Big Gay Block. Um, wrestling, you know, wrestling him or, or wrestling alongside uh, Dark Sheik, which I can only imagine, like, that those experiences must have been surreal more than anything else for you um how, how do you plan on going forward furthering that representation that you were talking about i guess that's a hard question i mean i'd love to um be on tv like obviously like that's that's definitely a goal to be this kind of representation on tv mm -hmm. um that's one whole goal. Um, maybe someday get more into like management of wrestling. Like right now, I'm just a wrestler. I don't really have any like, you know, I don't have a promotion. I'm, you know, another thing I want is like with what little kind of clout and pull I have, I want to help make sure that if I have an opportunity to give to someone, um, I can help elevate other queer wrestlers. Um, you know, there's kind of in certain situations. You know, they're not always the most, we're not always the most promoted or used or thought about um, demographic within wrestling. So I would love to be able to give more opportunities to other queer up and coming talent and help put them over and help elevate them um, and any kind of underrepresented group within wrestling. Um, you know, I think that's a huge thing as far as like going back to wrestling storytelling is. In wrestling, we, we call it getting over, meaning the crowd buys into your character. So they either, if you're a baby face, which is the good guy um, or the hero, um, getting over means the crowd cheers for you. Uh, if you're the heel or the bad guy or the villain, um, you get over because the crowd will boo you and hate you. Um, so... Um, in wrestling, you want to, once you get over, you know, the goal is having other wrestlers who are over, who are successful, who the, the fans like, to have them, you put a new wrestler against them, and then that builds up this new wrestler. Um, so your goal is always, once you get over, to help build up other wrestlers. So it's like you build up this one wrestler just so you can charge up these other wrestlers, and then they can charge up the other wrestlers, and, and so on and so on. So, um you know, now that I'm finding my way up that like ladder and getting over, so to speak, I want to make sure I can use that to help put other wrestlers over. Um, you know, I, I think I, not that Dark Sheik needed it, but, you know, she's mostly known on the West Coast because that's mostly where she's worked as of late. She's mostly known for Hood Slam. Um, and, you know, Hood Slam, they, I think they're primarily on Discord, um, is where they put their shows, but a lot of fans are watching on, say, IWTV. Mm -hmm. So, um, or Fight TV or whatever. So I was able to help kind of build, add my West Coast or my East Coast audience and my fan base and mix that with her West Coast fans. So we were able to kind of build each other up in that way and introduce each other to each other's audiences. Um, so, like, that was kind of a mutual building up getting over kind of situation so i want to keep you know doing that and and be able to help um you know other talent and give them opportunities that they otherwise may not have had okay okay no it, it's a it's definitely a very good goal to have and definitely something that not only yourself but a lot of wrestlers should definitely aspire for to to build a lot of these wrestlers in these communities because it's one of those you know at the end of the day when it comes to the wrestling community as a whole you know it's like the art community there's no need for like the gatekeeping or anything like, anything like that a community cannot strive if they're not working together so i can i can absolutely see where you're coming from on that one so yeah and absolutely and and the wrestling world like a wrestling show should be reflective of the audience mm -hmm. it should be diverse because the audience is diverse um, it's not just a specific type of person who, who, uh, well, no, I lost my words, but, um, you know, it, who's on your show should reflect the audience. Cause that's only going to grow your audience. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's if you have a more diverse roster, you have this more diverse opportunity to connect with more and more people. 
And I, I'm, I'm thankful that we're starting to show that, you know, people like Effie can show that with big gay brunts. People like Billy Dixon can show that with the Cassandra cup. Mm -hmm. Um, we can show that we're a viable audience. We're not just a sideshow. We're not just this one specific thing. We can be the whole show. We can be something that you need to have on any show. I mean, one of the one of the exciting things about wrestling nowadays is there's this kind of resurgence of, of women's wrestling, right. um, which, you know, for a long time, it wasn't given the kind of platform that it deserved. You know, there it kind of had collapsed a little bit in Japan and on American TV, it was not what it should be. And now in 2021, anytime there's a show that doesn't have a women's match, it catches attention because that feels like a big faux pas. It feels very like, like it's glaring that women's matches are missing. And even just not having one, but not having multiple or not having an even split of intergender matches and women's matches and men's matches. Um, that stands out today. And maybe five years that no one would have noticed, noticed that. But now it's like, it glared a mission and I want to keep pushing wrestling in that direction where if you have a show that doesn't, that doesn't have a roster that looks like your audience or looks like, you know, the people that exist, your fans, that has to stand out. You know, that has to be a faux pas. There we go. I mean, and, and like you said, that diversity is definitely something that's definitely needed in the wrestling community uh, or just mm-hmm. as a community as a whole, because I mean, you said yourself, you know, a wrestling shows a reflection of that audience. And I mean, that audience, it, it, we are in the most diverse and most connected period, in, in my opinion, most accepted period. And I mean, there's still a long way to go with that, but at the same time, like, you know, wrestling is certainly a good place to help showcase that and to help support that more than anything else. Correct me if I'm wrong in saying that. <laughs> yeah. I think wrestling is a good place for that. And it's a, you know, it is a, there are places that are not great, but for the most part, wrestling is a very strong community and it's, you know, um, a place for a lot of people to come together who may not have, you know, elsewhere in their life, things aren't exactly going to plan. And wrestling is a great escape for that and a great way to build community and to be inspired by these heroes in the ring to help, um, you know, escape something or to feel inspired by something and to build something up like you know that's it's really important to me that people can feel inspired by me and my journey to you know going back to being queer like i'm transitioning in public like Mm -hmm. i'm very openly trans and sharing my journey with my fans and that's extremely vulnerable but um i'm hoping that people can be inspired that it's okay to go through these awkward moments or whatever it may be um I just lost my train of thought again, but just to be that kind of like to help inspire people and to help make them feel um, like they can do it and that they're not alone and that there is someone that looks like them or acts like them or um, is in a similar position as them to fight through it. There we go. There we go. Um, Oh, you know, I forgot to ask this. I forgot to ask this question sooner, but, you know, we were talking about, like, you know, the heroes and the villains and all these different, like, the silhouette tests you were talking about earlier when it comes to showcasing these incredible people. Aside from yourself, who would you say is the most aesthetically pleasing wrestler out there? Like, who has, like, the best presentation and, or the best, like, most complete package as a whole when it comes to a wrestler? Um, I'll say I brought her up before, but Shotzi Blackheart, yeah. um, I love her look. It fits who she has. It, it fits her personality mm-hmm. and makes her stand out. Um, you know, she's so for those people who don't know, she has like lightning bolts on her gear. And Chatsy Blackheart is a very like vibrant personality. Um, she's loud. She's exciting. And if she was like, if you were to illustrate her, you would put all those radiating lines from her and you would put lightning bolts around her. Um, so like she's just very vibrant and very loud. In all the and like all the on all great ways, um, and that reflects her wrestling style and her personality and her entrance and her energy, um, and I think her look just perfectly encapsulates all of that. There we go. There we go. I couldn't agree more. She she certainly got that presentation more than anything else down to a T. Like she knows what she is. She knows who she is, and she is rocking it more than anything else. Yeah, and it's authentic. <laughs> it's her. Yes. So 
um, that makes it all the better. You need that authenticity to get people to really to really connect with people. There we go. There we go. All right. So we've been talking about like you know the different matches you've had, different you know, opportunities. I, I want to do a little dream scenario. Let's say I'm you know Mr. Big Shot Money Bags, you know Booker okay. slash Promoter, whatever you want to be. I go up to you. I'm like, look. We love everything about you right now. Like you're, you're one of the best wrestlers that we've had a chance to see. What would be the dream job that you had that you would love to have with a promotion, or what would be the dream match you would love to book with anyone, no matter where they are right now? Again, I'm I'm Mr. Moneybags. I got the money to make it happen more than anything else. Um, does this include people who have passed away? Yes, it does. Okay, I mean probably China. Okay, um, she was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. Um just as someone who like stood out and kind of made her way through like a man's world, you know, she held, you know, the intercontinental championship, um, being a woman fighting against men. Um, so that was just like really inspiring to me. So I, I probably say China just because of how much she inspired me. Okay. Okay. I'll have to see if I have enough money to get some necromancy stuff going on, but I think I can make it happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe in you. I, I think it's possible. Um, well, I'll go ahead and ask this generic question as well. You know, both as an artist and as a wrestler, where do you hope to see yourself, say, five, ten years from now? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I hope I have a full time as a rest, a full time job as a wrestler. I hope I'm able to like fully support myself wrestling. I'm getting close, but um, not there yet. Um, so that's probably my, my main goal. And however that is, you know, I'm, um, if that means I'm on the independent, that's what it is. I like it. Um, if I have a cool contract, like, oh yeah, but, um, that's kind of like where I see myself is like kind of at that point where, um, this is all I do and I can fill that calendar up and travel all week, all weekend and, you know, hang out with my dog during the week. (laughs) Um, Enjoy that time. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I mean, it's it's definitely a good aspiration to have. I mean, who doesn't want to have that eventual time? You know, like especially for independent wrestlers out there, who doesn't want that full time contract? Especially to really like truly be themselves. Like I can imagine how many of them mm-hmm. in the in you know, like you know WWE and AEW and even you know Impact, Ring of Honor having those contracts. I can only imagine how many of them are just living the dream right now of doing what they've wanted. Yeah. It's like what you're doing right now. So. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, as we're winding down, I just have one last question to ask. Um, like I said, you know, like you've established in the beginning, like for you, wrestling is art. And I mean, you also very heavy, heavy, heavy handed with art itself. How important is art, not just for you, but for the world as a whole? Oh my God. It's so important. Um, I can't be the only answer I can, but um, I think it's just, it, it, it reflects so much of what's happening in society. So you get a good, like, you know, you can see where you're at in time with what the art looks like in that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, it helps inspire you. Um, it helps reflect an emotion that you want to tap into or you don't really have or, you know, you're in a dark time or you need inspiration and you need a positive force. Um, I think wrestling or, you know, art and wrestling can provide that. All right. I, I cannot think of a better way to word it myself. That is all the questions I have. Um, Edith, I've already showered you with a, a lot of praises as it is, but I'm going to shower you a lot more because it's my podcast. I want to, um, uh, uh, like I said before, like when, whenever I see just any sort of presence that you have online, especially with Twitter, um, especially in the wrestling what Twitter community, like you are one of the, the brightest stars I see out there. Um, your presentation, you've got that thing nailed down to a T. Like you're, again, I can see you and instantly know like what's up. You know, I, I know that you are rocking whatever you're going to be rocking and to see you continue to grow more and get more of these opportunities with these promotions. I, I'm one of the me- I'm one of hopefully many, if not, you know, a whole lot more that's going to be rooting for you and really hoping that you do get those opportunities that you do get that contract where you can be that full-time wrestler. Because I, if this is what you're doing right now, I can only imagine what you'll be able to do whenever it's nothing but wrestling as a full-time job. So thank you once again for taking time to sit down and chat. And you know, I, I'm really excited for what's next. So thank you for what you do. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you for those kind of words. Thank you for having me on here. Um, is, this was a pleasure. I love talking about 
wrestling and art and um this is just really cool thank you so much i really appreciate that oh, no, no, absolutely it's one of those i get you know whenever i set out to to do this podcast you know like i said i'm a huge wrestling fan myself so whenever i had made this podcast like one of the things i wanted to do was sort of expand everyone's mind on what art could be and i know wrestling can be an art so to have yourself sit down and chat and not only like talk about just how much wrestling is an art of itself but finding a way that you do to find just that perfect blend i keep saying it but you find like the perfect blend of like showcasing art and being a wrestler which is an art on its own i knew i had to have you down whenever i was actually like before i was starting this podcast i made like a list and you were one of the first names i had listed down so it's really been an honor to have you sit, to sit down and chat so thank you once again oh my gosh thank thank you thank you this is a pleasure <laughs> uh go ahead and plug yourself for the people at home okay so you can find me um it's edith surreal um on instagram and twitter and Pinterest, I pin so much cute stuff. No one ever follows me on Pinterest. I plug this every single podcast <laughs> on Pinterest. Um, I'm performing at the Cassandra Cup on March 28th on IWTV, which is independent wrestling television. I'm also going to be in Tampa, Florida for both the collective and IWTV's showcase of the independence. That is the second week of April. Um, in Florida, it's going to be streaming on Fight TV and independent wrestling television. Um, I have a bunch of crazy matches I'm really, really excited about. Um, and then find me on Beyond Wrestling, which is also on IWTV. Um, I am in the um, tournament for tomorrow with my partner, formerly known as Blank now, um, St. Jackson DuPont. So we are a tag team there. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. Okay. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. Um, watch me on Can't Believe Frog, which is also on IWTV and Facebook and YouTube. There we go. I'll be sure to have those links in the description below. I'll make that Pinterest link the first one so people can find that one first. Um, yes! <laughs> so many cute things. <laughs> um, do you have any final words before we sign off? No. No? Okay, then. <laughs> uh, but with... What? No, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> so I was going to say, but with that, all I have left to say is, hasta luego, mi amigos. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>